Now we're going to talk about the difference between precision and accuracy. One of the things I said earlier was that most of the numbers that you use in science are going to be measurements. And as such, each of those measurements that you make has a certain precision and a certain accuracy. And it's very important that you understand the difference between the two. Precision, by definition, precision has all to do with how repeatable your measurements are. In other words, precision has to do with how close a series of measurements come to each other. So if you were in, and five other students were to measure the length of a piece of string and you all came up with exactly the same measurement to the hundredth place, you would know that you were precise because all your measurements were very close to each other. Now, whether or not you're accurate, that has to do with something else. Accuracy. Accuracy depends on how close your measurement comes to some accepted or standard value. Some accepted value. You do not know if your measurement is accurate unless you have an accepted value to compare it to. Here's an example. If your teacher tells you that the acceleration due to gravity is 9.80 meters per second squared, well, you might not know what a meter per second square is. You might not have any idea what the acceleration due to gravity even means. But your teacher told you that the acceleration due to gravity was 9.80 meters per second squared. And then you do an experiment to determine the acceleration due to gravity and you find that it's 9.41 meters per second squared. That's the results of your experiment. At the end of your experiment, you look at your results and you say, well, the acceleration due to gravity according to my experiment is 9.41 meters per second squared. Well, compare those two, compare those two numbers. 9.80 meters per second squared, that's what your teacher told you it was and 9.41 meters per second squared. That's what you, your experiment told you that the acceleration due to gravity was. So, your accuracy is expressed as a percent. And in this case, your measured value differs from the accepted value by negative 4%. Your, act, your accuracy is negative 4%. That's not your precision. Your accuracy here is negative 4%. What does that mean? Well, the negative 4 tells you that you are under the accepted value by 4%. The negative sign means that it's under the accepted value. The teacher told you the accepted value. If the teacher never told you the accepted value, you would not know if you are accurate or not. You can treat that accepted value as though it's the bullseye and you're shooting an arrow at it. If you don't hit that bullseye, you're not accurate. If you hit the center of the bullseye, you would be accurate, 100% accurate. And the further you are from the bullseye, the less accurate you are. Well here, the further you are from the accepted value, the less accurate you are. If you're under the accepted value, then you're negative. If you're over the accepted value, then it would be positive. Also note that accuracy is a continuum. That means it continues from very accurate poor accuracy depending on the percent difference from the actual or accepted value. In other words, very simply put, the further you are from the accepted value, the less accurate you are. Here's another example. Let's say you and a lab partner each use a stopwatch to measure the time it takes for a ball to roll down a ramp. And here are your measurements. This comes from your experiment. Your data that means your information. This is the data that you collected yourself. It is in the left hand column here. Look at the numbers. This was the time it took it, the, it took the ball to roll down the ramp. 2.10 seconds. 
second time you rolled it down the ramp you measured it as 2.05 seconds the third time it rolled down the ramp you measured it as 1.85 seconds the next time 2.35 seconds and the fifth time it rolled down the ramp you measured it as 2.22 seconds your partner's data over here look at these numbers your partner said that the first time it rolled down the ramp it was 2.80 seconds second time your partner measured 2.77 seconds the third time 2.77 second seconds and the fourth time 2.78 seconds and the fifth time 2.77 seconds again well if you look at those measurements you can see that the average is 2.11 seconds that's your average the average of your measurements was 2.11 seconds and the average of your partner's measurements was 2.78 seconds right there 2.78 seconds look how they differ from each other your average was 2.11 seconds your partner's average was 2.78 seconds now let's talk about accuracy and precision here's your data again in the data collected you can see that the data you collected was not as precise as the data your partner connect collected now, why wasn't it as precise well remember what precision is precision is how close a series of measurements come to each other and if you look at your measurements right here 2.10 2.05, 1.85, 2.35, and 2.22 seconds. You can see that they're really not that close to each other. So if precision is how close a series of measurements come to each other, then it doesn't look like you're very precise. So let's take a look at your measurements compared to your partner's measurements even though your measurements are less precise than your partners they may actually be more accurate than your partners you don't know this because you were never given an accepted value watch this the average your average was 2.11 seconds right here 2.11 seconds your partner's average remember was 2.78 seconds so even though your measurements are less precise than your partners they may accurate actually be more accurate than your partners you don't know this because you're never given the accepted value if the actual value from some reference like your teacher is 2.10 seconds then you can see that you are more accurate even though your numbers were less precise you're more accurate because your average comes closer to the teachers value what the teacher told you the accepted value was accepted value is often referred to as a standard of comparison and here you can see that the accepted value is 2.10 seconds that's what your teacher told you it was and who is closer to that you or your partner well obviously it's you you're closer to that so you are more accurate than your partner however your partner's measurements are more precise why because they're closer together these measurements are closer together right there even though your accuracy is better you're not as precise look at these diagrams it shows six shots fired at four targets in target one you can see that these shots are precise but they're not accurate now here we're dealing with not numbers or measurements but now we're dealing with a target they're precise but not accurate so you might ask yourself well, why are they precise well they're precise simply because they're all very close to each other and why are they not accurate because they're not anywhere near the bullseye the closer they would be to the bullseye the accepted value if you're talking about numbers then the more accurate it would be 
Now, here's the second target. These shots are neither precise nor accurate. They're not accurate, they're not precise. Why? Well, if you look at them, they're certainly not accurate because they're nowhere near the bullseye. They're scattered all over. And they're not precise because they're not near each other. Now, if you're talking about numbers, measurements that are not near each other and don't come close to the accepted value, they're neither precise nor accurate, just like these shots. All right, let's take a look at this third target. These shots were precise and accurate. Why? They're accurate because they hit the bullseye. That's the accepted value if you're talking about numbers. And they're precise. Why? Because they're all close together. So if you're talking about numbers being accurate and precise, they would have to be close to each other. The measurements would have to be close to each other. And they would also have to hit the accepted value or come close to the accepted value. The last target that you see here shows poor precision but good average accuracy. This is what you shoot for when you're making measurements. When you make measurements in science, you never just make one measurement. Just like in the example rolling a ball down a ramp, you don't make one measurement. You don't roll the ball down the ramp one time. What you do is you roll the ball down the ramp a series of times, more than one time. 5, 10, 20, the more the better. And what happens is when you find the average, you hopefully will be increasing your average accuracy. So what do you want to remember from this? Remember that if you want to increase average accuracy, you always make more than one measurement and you average them together. That should increase your average accuracy. Here's another target. Precise but not accurate. Why? Because they're precise, they're close together. They're not accurate because they didn't come near the bullseye. In terms of numbers, again, if your numbers are close together, but they don't come near the accepted value, then they might be precise but not accurate. If you consider the bullet holes to represent measurements, then this target represents good precision and poor accuracy. Good precision because the shots or measurements are close to each other. Poor accuracy because the shots or the measurements fell far from the bullseye or the, if you're talking about numbers or measurements, the actual value. Again, here's the other target, neither accurate nor precise. This target represents poor accuracy and poor precision. The bullets fell far from the bullseye, poor accuracy, and poor precision because they were not close to each other. And again, you can compare this to numbers. In this target, the bullseye represents the accepted value, as the 9.80 meters per second squared did in the acceleration due to gravity data in the first example. Here's the one that is precise and accurate. Now, ideally, when you're making measurements, this is what you shoot for. You want your numbers to fall close to each other, and you want them to be right on the accepted value. Can you always do that? No. So this is what we all hope for, accurate, precise measurements. Here the measurements are close together, and they are equal to the accepted value. This, however, is what you probably will wind up using when you do some activity in this course. You probably will have fairly poor precision, but if you make lots of measurements, you might have good average accuracy. Target D is the more common result. Poor precision, but good average accuracy. This target does not show very good precision, but the average accuracy is good. The average position of the bullet holes is the bullseye. If you look at the average position, if you were to draw a line here, 
through these bullet holes. All of the lines would cross right through the bullseye. So this is what you would shoot for in terms of your measurements would be poor precision but good average accuracy and that's why you take many measurements and then you average them together.